Could I please ask Democratic Services to mute everyone and begin the recording? Pronoun da pub, Croizoy Cavardod Hedu. Good afternoon. Welcome to Neighborhood Services Countryside and Planning Committee on Monday, the 27th of June, 2022. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and may be broadcast via the authority's internet site. The images and sound recording may also be used for training purposes within the authority. Uh, Michelle, are there any apologies for absence? No apologies for absence have been received, Chair. Thank you. Um, and are there any declarations of interest? No. Bear with me. Move on then to the scrutiny work program. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, uh, David. I have put my hand up, but Malcolm Corbyn can't get into his um, computer. He said, "Can you give apologies, please?" Certainly, Paula. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I just need to amend the lists for a second. Um, move on then to agenda item three, which is the scrutiny work program 2223. Um, the summary of the report is to provide scrutiny members with the draft forward work program framework for consideration to develop its work program and to prepare in advance of the next scrutiny committee meeting. Well, to agree the forward plan for meetings prior to this summer recess, including the agenda for the first scrutiny committee meeting after the local elections, and to remind scrutiny committee members what that they need to consider the requirements of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, uh, Wales Act 2015 in all aspects of scrutiny work. There are three recommendations to one, two, two, and two, three that we will come on to later. Um, I will now move move you across to Andrew Mogford, who will give uh, a brief summary of the report. OK, thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll pass over to Neil in a second now. Uh, but j just to reiterate what the Chair said, really, um, we're in a process now of developing the forward work programme on the back of the, the training and the involvement that we've all had, so that as a committee, uh, we can agree that in September, uh, addressing some of the uh, some of the issues that we've had previously in terms of uh, some of the targets for scrutiny, but most importantly, getting the right work program that we're uh, that we're all going to work on. I'll pass over to Neil, who's going to take us through the detail of the report. Chair. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Andrew. Um, yeah, just to expand a bit further on the report and what um, Dave, uh, Councillor Jones, and Andrew have said, uh, basically we need to agree the items in Appendix One as a committee because this this is part of our first cycle. Um, but in addition to this, we've set out some key principles um, in developing our work program to bring this back to this meeting in September. Um, and those key principles that we've used previously, but we've written them in a different way, which we touched on in the training, such as the four S's and the four R's. Um, but for the focus of the work program, would be the four R's that we'd be mainly um, looking at. Um, as you would have seen, there are some suggestions for us to consider in Appendix 1. Um, these has come back from the Cabinet member and the Director, but it's important to remember that this is member-led. Um, and other ideas can be will can be put forward, um, and we'll be developing workshops to obviously get get those ideas put forward. Um, and again, the chair will hold workshops as a committee, um, where we aim to draft the work program. Um, and again, we'll get that in place so we can get a more sort of um, uh, work program put forward in September for our next meeting. Then. Thank you, Neil. Um, do any of the members have any ideas of uh, subjects to, to put into the work programme? Uh, Councillor, sorry, I, I missed them as they come in up. So I'm going to go with Councillor Clyde Jones. Next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think that uh, we should have the uh, parks and playgrounds 
and the progress on the work programme um, that should definitely be on the next agenda, in my opinion. Um, and I'll be interested to hear what other members have to say about the other items. Yeah, thank you for, for that, Clive. Uh, Bill Smith, please. Thank you, Chair. Have we, have we had the, um, the Cabinet uh, forward plan yet? Because that could, that could be matching with this. Because uh, otherwise, you know, we'd be changing everything all over again. Uh, I don't believe we've had the, the Cabinet forward work programme. We, we're still waiting for it, Bill. Um, and I agree, you, with, I agree with what you're saying. Um, but we're not likely to have that before the next meeting, so we do need to put um, items in place. Well, I, I'll accept that, but can we ask the company member when the forward plan will be put forward? Um, yeah, I answer that, Dave. Yes, come in, uh, Councillor Hughes. Yeah, we, we, we'll we get that to you as soon as possible. Hopefully, within the next few weeks, we will have a forward work program program so for for you all to see it um it's only because of the late election and now it's only a month since we were elected but you will be having a forward work plan i can show you that okay yeah. thank you dave and also chair can i come back and support clive on this because we want to sort something on our playgrounds and uh, f and f playground furniture because somebody's in a mess and can we have a look at it? Yes, yeah, certainly. Obviously, it's a decision for the whole of the committee, uh, but certainly happy to accept that as one of the recommendations. Um, there are still two hands up. Bill, you were hands up, and Clive, and are they legacy hands? Or Yes, I'm putting mine down now. Sorry. No problem. No, my, mine's not a legacy hand, uh, Chair. And in that case, come back in, Clive. Right. Um, just to add to the parks and playgrounds, if that's going to be an item on the agenda and we're going to have a report, uh, can it include the fact that we've got capital set aside for a, for a refurbishment of four playgrounds this year? And I understand um, it may well be four playgrounds next year, but that needs to be in the report as to um, how we are going to get around the fact that we need capital to complete the work. I think we got 55 playgrounds. My other suggestion, Chair, is that there's an item here uh, which refers to King Hill's ID and are more bins necessary the answer to rest that partnership work potential policy change? Um, and I think that uh, would be an interesting item as well, Chair. Thank you. Do you... Can I uh, come back to Clive over there? There's more than four parks to be done this year, Clive. There's uh, seven parks to be done, and uh, there's money for a neighbourhood park as well as that. So a report that will show in the report that I will bring to you in the next, well, when Dave wants the report. Chair, is, is it possible that's that first that, that you've heard of that, that there's going to be more than four? Um, obviously, you, you're aware, Councillor Hughes, what the others are. Is it possible the committee um, beforehand to be uh, furnished with all the playgrounds that you anticipate to be done this year? Yeah, what, what we got, we got a report which was given to myself last week with... Uh, the state on each playground and where they to be done in the cycle of uh, refurbishments. So I'm happy to bring that report to uh, uh, if that's what the chair wants. Yes, please. Uh, and at your earliest convenience, if possible, please, David. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Paula. Yeah, it was just around the parks so with Clive Johnson, Billy was it? I'm agreeing with is will we be able to see or David was just saying now, so he's probably answered it, what parks are being done this year and how they're assessed? Yeah, will you that can. be in your report, Dave? Yeah, that being report the report that was done but independently, yeah. Right. So what does need to be prioritized will be in the report of what parks, yeah. 
That's correct, yeah. Lovely, thanks. Thank you. Um, are there any other recommendations from committee members as to what should go next, certainly next into the uh, our forward work programme? If there are no, oh, sorry, David, is that a legacy hand or David Hughes? Yes, sorry, Chair. No problem. Um, I am going to interject you for a second. In the, on page 11, we give an ideas of um, things that could go into the, into our work program. And one of them is the recycling and HWRC performance review. Um, and the potential right time mark for that is earlier in the scrutiny cycle to refresh the policy in November or December. That cabinet, I assume, will be looking at this policy in November, December. Um, so can I suggest that that's included in it as well as one of the two items to be dealt with next time round? Um, sorry, sorry, Clive or Bill, I'm not sure which one of you was next. Um, <laughs> I, I, I take advantage of your one man, right? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I agree yeah, with you. What, what I was going to ask is, I, I was social landlords. I go many areas in the borough. Do we, can we have reg, can we have regulars or can we get regular meetings with them to discuss certain things like flight tipping, uh, litter picking. We got grass areas not being cut. We got grass areas the blind side that's full of rubbish. And never be cut. You know, I like to like have some sort of dialogue with with those associations, not only with the value homes, we've got Wales and West and other parts. How, how do we fit them all in? We've got, to, we've got a problem. I say my problem is 99% of um, MVH. But again, it's the little problems and everything else. And we all got the same issues in every better. So can we? sit down and look at them and talk to them and how can we work together to pick the rubbish up because because some go around picking one one street one won't go around the other corner because it's not their land and it's just double money no it costs us money and now people are asking questions why they're not picking it up so can we sit down and put a plan together yeah uh no problem with that bill Seems like a good idea to me. Um, I don't know whether we could arrange a workshop for that, where we could invite um, some of our committee and representatives from each each of the RSLs, possibly. I don't know if that's uh, feasible, or if we need to have some sort of an internal meeting with our officers first. But certainly, um, I'm more than happy to look to look at look in that direction. Yeah, it's, I saw this kick it about, so. Yeah, good idea. Uh, Clive Jones. Yeah, I, I I agree with you a suggestion about bringing forward the recycling and the civic amenity sites. And I did suggest about the Keep Wales presentation, but that perhaps could wait until the scrutiny committee after that. Uh, yeah, well, as as we've always been aware, the the work program will always be flexible, and if yeah. something comes up in the meantime, we'll juggle it. Not not that yeah. we want to do that too much, but if that's what's necessary, that's what we'll do. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Jeremy Davis, next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I agree. Agree with Bill what he said about the social landlords, because it would be nice to have reports about the tonnage they're picking up. Because obviously, as Bill will tell you in the Gurnas, we're value home, say they let the pick it three times a week. But I know that don't happen. And Bill will tell you it don't happen. Because obviously they got a lot of land and two litter pickers for the old better. But also, can we um put something on a uh, chair for um to do with the biodiversity? Because I'm quite confused with some of it lately, because we've asked for the hospital path to be cut, for example, um, in between the early pad and the Hospital fence, which is belongs to council, are they are they trying to tell us no? It's for biodiversity, slow worms in there, and it's not. I've been lived in a greenhouse all my life, like Bill have, but well, more so lives, and um, 
they're trying to tell us the slow worms and that's good for biodiversity but it's the six foot stingies hanging over the path paths like ours should be cut that's not biodiversity the rest of the field should shouldn't be cut but obviously that path by the side of the hospital we got problems going past and i know this is a few areas like in crawford park where they are not cutting it back where there's public paths that people got to walk past so so what you're saying is edgings around footpaths yeah yeah um or maybe um i don't know meet uh, uh invite officers into a meeting or whatever with neighborhood services who deal with it so you can ask them what, what is going on because obviously that is not biodiversity uh yeah i agree that's a reasonable um reasonable request thank you chair no problem uh paula Thank you, Chair. I'm just around where Billy was on about for there is how, how do we collaborate with um, the social landlords now? Is there a set uh, meetings or is it on, like Billy just said, now they'll set something up to have a discussion with them? Um, I don't know if for David or yourself or I don't know who answers that. Probably I'm just David wondering James. how you go about it, you know? Uh, probably David. And how can we improve it one. then? Yeah. I know that Judith has um, meetings with the leaders of both RSLs, so where these are discussed. But um, that's that's as far as I know. You know, she that meetings do take place. So, could I also ask as well? Where would I would I be able to request? Or oh, I don't feel it would go onto the scrutiny agenda or the the Dallas, the the grounds map for cutting. The schedule of cutting to know what's going on, you know, where is done by us up here. The, so, Jerry, we were saying we're not sure what values. Yeah. Do you mean grass cutting by the council, Paula? Yes, yeah, sorry. It's a Douglas grounds map, the, you know, the cutting schedule and the frequency of the cuts for ourselves, for the council. You should have received. Would we have uh, yeah. I haven't had it. I don't think I've had it. I did bring it up um, with Declan earlier because I said about it. And I haven't had it. So. You should have had uh, an update last week from Gerald Lewis, given the, the the week the the coming weeks uh, schedule. No, it was. Um, I know the agenda. I know what you mean. The agenda. I had that. I'm on about the actual grounds map to show. What areas in Dallas Pan Penawuna are cut by council? And vice versa. I've I've never asked for that, so the honest answer is I don't know. Dave, do you know? <laughs> um, are you asking what's cut by the RSL? Yeah, and what's what cut gets by... cut by uh, out the council? Obviously, on a, and I thought there was a type of map that would show the areas we have cut in different but different parts of the borough. And yeah, obviously they're, they're, some of that is Merthyr Valleys and whatever. So just wanted to know what our areas were. I know I'd be, I know we got the one for the council, but as far as the RSLs, I, I don't know with them, Paul, be on too. But that's a good idea if if I can ask Judith to work with um work with the officers of the RSL to produce them, which would be good for all of us in this meeting, I think. I just thought it would be easier for us to know, as, as Bill saying, you know, the grass is overgrown. We don't know if it's part of the council ground or, as you say, Merthyr Valley homes or whoever, you know, I just thought it would be easy to track it, maybe Paul, for ourselves. Paula, if you've had that email of Gerald. On uh, it, yeah. With the schedule of grass cutting, mm. if you return that to him, and ask Gerald if he can provide you with a map for your area. Right. Okay. Lovely. Thanks, David. And to, uh, to look at. If if not, happy days come back and uh, we'll see what yeah. we can do. Yeah. Let's have a look. All right. Thank you. Andrew Andrew Mogford, please. I I was just gonna gonna reiterate. Uh, I think it all of this stuff is good data that we can have. Um, to inform our reports going forward. I think uh, if we pick it up offline with the relevant officers, then they can provide the information either in advance of the report or as part of the report. So I uh, just, just wanted to reiterate what you said there, Chair. Yeah, it, whilst councillors may be interested in, the, in their own areas primarily, I don't think it'd be a bad thing to have an overview of 
the big picture as well. Um, Bill Smith. Yes, I got you. Yeah. It's a poor Jeremy of the comments he made about um, the edging around Prince Charles. But it's Prince Charles supposed to be cut in because the all them trees are on the other side of the fence line. And we made sure they put that there when, uh, when they put the fence line in. So when people pass down the pathway, they won't see the hospital or the ambulances. So perhaps our officers going to write to Prince Charles and ask them when they, what um, plans they got to cut back and like everything else. Yeah, we agree with that, Bill. Uh, Clive Jones. Thank you, Chair. Um, can I suggest one item which is not on the list here, that um, the other elected members who were um, on the council before last May would be well aware of, and something that I've certainly been lobbying for years, and that's the policy about dealing with litter and fly tipping on privately owned land. Um, now, the last I heard of it was that there was a internal group of officers uh, dealing with this and we were going to report back at some stage. That was weeks and weeks ago. I think it was a few months ago. Um, you know, frankly, this is the bane of a lot of members lives right throughout the county borough because the the public don't understand if you clear up the litter just before private land but then cannot step on private land try and explain that to uh, the constituents out there and your their eyes will roll so is it possible to uh, ask the officers whatever this group is looking at uh, to come back with a report, um, whether they intended originally to come back to the full council or to a scrutiny committee, I don't know. But at the, mo at the moment, I've heard nothing, Chair. Yeah, thank you. I'll bring Andrew in before anyone else. I'm happy to give way to Councillor Hughes. Ready, uh, David yeah. Hughes, please. Yeah, I believe fly tipping now is under environmental services Clive so that would go to the committee rather than ours yeah that, that that's what, exactly what I was going to say there thanks Councillor Hughes so I mean what we could do is the outcome of that scrutiny report we could have them to to provide us a summary uh that, that, that it can come here as well but yeah exactly as Councillor Hughes said it does fit under another committee uh, but if we do feel strongly, we can have the outcome of that scrutiny uh, shared with us, or perhaps we could have a joint workshop or something. Well, Chair, I would say it's not what it is flight tipping, but there's litter there as well. So, uh, you know, uh, this scrutiny committee deals with litter, so it's overarching in two scrutiny committees. Then perhaps we could be involved with that uh with that the committee that deals with that of a, a joint one yeah perhaps that's the way forward yeah um Thank you. paula i believe is next ah uh, yeah thanks chair you know just what clive was saying but there obviously it is litter and it is crossing over and i think maybe we could bring that together to could we do a joint on that just that's because it is as clive said litter but also can i ask um on the private land one because i know they changed the ruling for unregistered didn't they but going forward there was nothing well there was it was brought up and nothing was done for the private would that impact the targets then that the council got to meet by moving that or would we go down the process of getting the actual owner to remove that do you understand what i mean yeah, but it but it impact our recycling and yeah, uh, you know, because obviously we got targets, and although I agree with Clive totally, because I think it's an ice or whatever it is, it it's litter. But will it will it reflect on our targets then, or is there a process we can put in place to get these private landlords to take responsibility of what they should be doing? You know, if it's their land, then they are responsible for it. Is there a process we can follow for that? I believe there is enforcement that we can take um, and 
instruct them to remove it from the land and there's no um no effect on our recycling and waste figures but what about believe, costs but, sorry but, oh. but if we remove it then it will affect our figures it will and what about cost and then if we did have to take them down that route of you need to remove this because a lot of them they know they're supposed to remove it it hasn't been removed so if you went further would that cost be more to us than it would by affecting our targets if you know what i mean actually taking steps against them then uh, paul i don't know the answer to that one um it may be... above, above my pay grade so maybe paul that that you know, that's a valid question, but maybe we can pick that up when the item comes to the scrutiny committee then. Lovely. Uh, right. And we can go into that in a little bit more detail when we develop the forward work plan to make sure you okay. get your answer. OK, then. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. No problem. Uh, Jeremy, next, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Well, Paul has asked some of what I wanted to ask. But um, no, just to reflect on what I've done about the hospital path, I think building and stand what I've said. And not on about the, the edge trees that come out of the fence, the hospital cut them quite regular because it's on the land. I'm actually on about the two little grassed areas next to the path with the stingies on this actually council because obviously I've been dealing with them in emails. Right. So just to clear that up, but it's not, it's not coming from the hospital, it is on council land. I've got the emails to prove it. Possibly similar to what Paul, the question that Paula asked earlier on is if you dig out the email from Gerald Lewis from last week where the um, scheduled cutting was taking place and ask him for uh, a, a map of of the areas that we we should be cutting. Yeah, I know, I know it's always died because um, obviously comes lit the pick, otherwise they wouldn't let the pick if it's not our land, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but is, is, um, is, it, is it on his list, that's what I'm saying? Is it? No, they they know they won't put it on the list, look, because they say um, by diversity is thingy nettles that six foot high growing onto a path where people are gonna come off if if they don't get cut soon, they're gonna come off gonna have to come off the path onto a field where it that is a biodiversity area, if you know what I mean. Right, I understand, yeah. So um is it, if you see the area, you know what I mean? If, anything outside the fence is ours, anything that comes from inside the fence is down to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know how to advise you on that one, Jeremy. No, no, that's what I said. If we maybe if we can get um something on the program so we can have a word with officers as dealing with it. Yeah. And, uh, we can look at it because obviously while well, I'm all for biodiversity, yeah. In some areas we need to cut back the grass. There's no ifs or buts about it. You can't have stingy nettles that end up nine foot long overhanging a path where you can't even walk faster. But I'll give you an example to, to see the way entrance to Crawford Park the other day. One of my boys had to go and cut there because you couldn't even get a pram through it. So if you go to the top end of the park and go through by Gurness Nursery now, as you come through the old metal gate and you walk across, if someone's walking with a pram and someone's walking with a dog, one of you got to go back until there's space where you can pass each other. Is that overgrown there where only one person can go past, if you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, I'm just I'm just looking at page eleven of the report, and uh the second item is actually biodiversity and green space management. And the um potential right time for that apparently is November. We're looking at putting well, we have we are putting the September um two issues in now is is that really good is that going to be too late for you Jeff? no no november will be all right because obviously if they don't cut there we'll go over and cut their diet i mean that's not a problem but it's just like i, I just under, don't understand sometimes why they say not by diversity next to a, next to a place where it does need cutting and i'm not saying cut their all the way back to the fence sort of thing and but at least cut three foot in so people can pass yeah. each other without um, having to go back because otherwise you're going to get stung or etc. Yeah, I think the standard width is about a metre, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, happy for that to go for the no towards the November one. Um, 
if you are happy with that, Jeff, at least at least then we'll get a a categoric statement for what 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 how the biodiversity works. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant, Dallas. Thank you, Dave. No problem. Uh, Malcolm Colburn, please. Mark, you're on mute. You're on mute, Mark. You're on mute, Mark. He's saying he can't get off mute, he's saying. Oh, no. Turn the phone Did you in. type in the box, Mark? In the, the chat box? Can't. <laughs> Send it Maybe in email. Michelle there. can take him off. <laughs> Michelle, can you take him off mute? Just try here now. Okay, thank you. This is why you always start with my meetings before uh, I go on and restart the computer. <laughs> no, Che, I'm not able to take him off mute, only put him on mute. Um. Can you not ask him to knock himself off and start again? That's, that's a possibility. Sometimes it works. Malcolm, if you'd like to try and... Oh, I'm not going to recommend it, Bill. If it goes wrong, it's my fault. Well, you chair, yeah. <laughs> you take, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you, take, you take the butt anyway, you don't worry Yeah, Malcolm, it may be worth you switching your computer off and logging back in. Um, and I'll... There he goes. Somebody Do you want me to like... send him a message or no? No. He's just, just. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right in, Sorry, I've got big, big IT problems. Um, I've managed to restart my computer, but now it's stuck. Um, I'm on my phone, so apologies. But I'll have to turn the camera off because um, it's, it's not working tidy. But sorry about that. But uh, I can, I can, I am now part of the meeting. Okay. Thanks, chair. No problem. And you were trying to speak, Malcolm. No, that was all I wanted to say was I was having major IT problems. Oh, right. so I didn't have a no question. Apologies. Sorry. Um, Bill Smith. Yeah. Chair, yeah, sorry. Can somebody explain to me a flight tip and a little why they're not together on this committee? Because the, the problem we all know is a problem, especially on school runs and everything else. But the flight tipping is a major issue and it's a part of us. You know, wherever you walk around any corner, and if I say it's, it's a part of the litter issue we've got. So can somebody explain to me why? Yeah, I can take that if you want. Thanks, Councillor. Um, it's based on the, the structure changes that have happened recently, but based on the conversations that we've had today, I think it would be worthwhile having a joint, uh, joint workshop provided the chairs are happy with that. And we can take it forward in our way, Councillor. But so sorry, Andrew, but we still gotta talk about flight tipping and this meeting, and then we go to another joint meeting after a joint meeting. It's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? So no, no, I, I think I think what we would, is everywhere. Yeah, we, we would do it as one joint meeting as opposed to having it in two different places, um, provided so, that the councillors are happy for their chairs. No, myself, it should be, it should be, that flight tip, it should come here. That's my comments. Okay. Okay. Th th thanks, Councillor. I agree, Bill. Well, yeah, the, the two should go hand in hand, um, whether it's you or whether it's with them, but they should go hand in hand, in my opinion, but who am I? Um, Clive Jones. Yeah, just, I, just quickly, Chair, just to clarify, it comes to the Leighton's. Uh, point um, about this private land. The issue here is quite simply the council have got various acts on the statute book that they can utilise for enforcement. The issue has been, um, and there's various acts, um, there's certainly one in planning which I've tried to utilise in the past, and there's certainly, I think, more than one in environmental health. It comes down, it boils down to whether the council, uh, the officers are prepared to bite 
the bullet and enforce action. And ultimately, you're quite right, it may well end up in court, but the council can ask for costs against the private owner. So just wanted to make that point because obviously we'll discuss it when we have the joint meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Paula, are you do you do to come back in? Yeah, it, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Clive, exactly. It's a brilliant point. I mean, it's got to be dealt with. So whether it's through us, which it probably should be, and as you say, we can get the costs back. But just quickly as well on that, is our target, is the 67% recycling rate, is that correct, Dave? At the moment, the target. Yes. Yeah. Going up to 20 percent in 24. Do you know, like Bill said, now you've got the um the fly tipping. I was over in environmental health, and obviously, um Andrew was saying about having a joint um to, to sort of try and deal with that. Would they have separate targets on different scrutinies? Because I'm new to this, I haven't got a clue. Is it just one set target for one? Do you understand yeah. what I'm coming from? The Welsh Government set the targets for different years. Right. And right. One set of targets throughout the country. Right. Um, and our one for 24, 25 is 70 percent. Right. So that's every scrutiny, not just neighbourhood services. It's every scrutiny, all the council, that's your target, yeah? For, for, for recycling and waste. For the council, yeah? For recycling and waste. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's just the one target. All right, lovely. Thank you. Um, Mr. Smith. No, sorry. Apologize. Good to see you. Happy days, Bill. Yeah, Adrian. I know the feeling, Bill. Um, are there any other um, comments regarding uh, potential things we can look at? No? Sorry, Dave, um, I was going to mention, can we have some sort of environmental health now that us with us and everything else? Because, because somebody mentioned they're not. I, we've got a program in certain areas with rats roaming, right. unbelievable. So I'd like to have some sort of feedback from what the environmental health, are they working with the water board? Are they working with the companies to bait these sewage? Because with the road works in on the 465, the work in Prince Charles is affecting all the sewers at the top end of the Gurness into Gunnaka. And it's, we go major issues everywhere, complaining, rats everywhere. I know I'm, these are four legged ones, not two legged ones. So we go major issues. So can we set something up to find out because people want to know what's happening? Uh. Andrew, well, how do we, uh, how would we go about that? Andrew Mogford, sorry. Yeah, similar kind of way, Chair. If you were happy and, and the chair of the, the other committee are happy, perhaps we could have a workshop uh, to go through that particular issue uh, in, in more detail and then bring our findings back to, to this workshop and and back to the relevant cabinet member then to close the loop. Well, I'm more than happy to support that. I agree with what Bill's saying and it's, uh, it's an issue that is growing continually. Um, Jeremy? Sorry, Chair. Sorry, Chair. Would the, in that workshop, would the, for example, the environmental health officers be present there or not? Yes, yeah, yeah. We, we designed the workshop to make sure the right people are there to answer the particular questions, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Chair. Right people, right time, Clive. <laughs> Jeremy, please. Yeah, just all one Bill saying there with the rats. Um, so some of the issues we got in some areas is mental, and Bill will probably back me up on this. When you contact, when when you tell residents, obviously the first thing you do when they contact them, have we reported there? Have we contacted Murphy Homes if they say your land council land? And that's all I see with residents, and I I have seen the replies they've had off uh, the council or Murphy Home. It's not our issue. It's uh, you with issue, you the tenant of the house, it's you a problem, or this the councillor saying, you know, it's um I know it's our land, but there's nothing we can do about it. But, and, and I mean, it would be nice to see a report where actually we need to do something. It's not everyone passing the back. 
both Councillor Murphy and the Orms need to work together in areas and like Welsh Water, where we've got these high percentage of problems because of work's going on. This, um, well, Bill would tell you, Goitra Lane is overrun at the moment, and that's just the houses, not Goitra Lane itself. Well, hopefully that joint scrutiny meeting would bring all that out because you'd have the relevant officers there. Um, and hopefully we, we could get clarity from that. Yeah, it just seems like from, from things I see, Chair, is um, everyone's passing the back on to everyone else, like Welsh Water, Council, Murphy, Orms, no matter whose land it is, like, and it's, to me, it's not acceptable. I don't know how people feel if uh, people got issues the same way we got. It's it's just, we can't, they can't keep burying in it. They read in the sand these organisations and say, you know, it's not our problem. It's like, well, we got a problem. Let's find a solution between us all. At least have a go and try and fix it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think that's what Bill's suggestion is, yeah, is about yeah. part of it. Yeah, Say, can, I come, can I come back in for a second? Because yeah. One of the biggest issues we get off the residents and the governors is, is, is they're going to pay £40. Pound. I can, um, we go in and we'll do it to uh, a bit of a cost of living problem, going to demand, you know, 40 pounds, a lot of money now, to help everybody and people are just don't know. But if we're going to have this meeting, shape meeting, can we get the water board involved? Whatever department deals with it so they can answer direct. And it's not yeah. just the 40 pound, I just to, just to follow up with Bill, see there, it's not just the 40 pound, it's like, Murphy Valley Homes, I don't know if you remember on scrutiny a while back, um, through emails, um, I got, I still got the email somewhere, where um, the council offered Murphy Valley Homes, where they were paying a private contract, I had £200, and they'd go, bait there, visit once, and they wouldn't go back there unless they got paid another £200, whereas the council who paid £40, you know, they go back and forth until it's, it's complete debt. Well, the council offered Murphy Valley Homes to do it for the same price for the tenants, for Murphy Valley Homes Pay, and they were all up there, and I can remember the email two days later, where they were like, no, we're not doing it, it's down to the tenants to pay themselves the same it, property. It, it could be, Chair, if I come in there, that we, that we pick that up as well, I know Dave, Councillor Dave Hughes is uh, is wanting to come in, but we pick that up in the in the workshop and we go through the details uh, regarding that in the workshop. Yeah, just something got to be done, because it's like, we can't just leave it, let it keep happening, because obviously I can imagine, or some of the members are having in here areas with rat issues, where it's where half the time ninety percent that's taking up the time. Strongly agree. Uh, David Hughes, please. Yeah, j just to leave you know, there is a conversation with the water board and ourselves going ahead about the uh, bait in the water board, uh, uh, bait in the drain. So they have there are discussions ongoing. So hopefully when you have that meeting, they'll be able to tell you what what the uh, outcome is of the meetings that they have in. Okay, thank you, David. Uh, Paula? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to say that um, obviously the rat problem is a borough-wide problem, but the fly tipping is two, and I think without the one being sorted, the other one isn't going to go away. So I think we do need to look at paying or looking at how to deal with that and we may get a result on the other one then. I think the fly tipping, the general rubbish in general, not just fly tipping, it's everywhere. Um, and I don't think that helps and I don't think it's going to resolve the rat issue if that isn't dealt with. Thank you. Well said, well said. So do we now have any further comments on the matter of our forward work programme? Or concerns. Phil Star, please. Are you on mute, Phil? Yeah, sorry, Di. Good shout. Uh, thank you, Chair. And just just listen to the conversations going on. I appreciate this is a this is a new scrutiny committee, and I served on the previous scrutiny committee. I just like to point out there's several issues on the on on the proposed forward work program. Were part of the brief of the previous committee. You know, made a, I remember discussions in the previous committee on parks and playgrounds. 
you know, there is there is a document which demonstrates which parks, which playgrounds are entitled to upgrades and which aren't. We we, we went over that in, in a lot of detail. Uh, I certainly remember a discussion about green space management and grass cutting. And I refer to the uh, the schedule of grass cutting, of which I've seen several times uh, with regard to what the council will do and what they won't do. So that definitely exists. Uh, we had a discussion about weeding and the use of fertilisers, well, whether fertilisers are appropriate or whether they can be used without damaging the environment. So the recycling targets, I remember a, a big discussion about uh, uh, the, the new uh, a proposed new permit scheme for the recycling sites, of which I've not heard anything uh, since. Uh, electric vehicles are on the list, and that was something which we discussed in a previous meeting. So, so my point here is that a, a lot of these uh, actions that are proposed are things which we already have discussed. And I think part of the issue that we've got here is that I and city perhaps new members of the committee are unsure as to where we are with regard to these particular proposals. Because what we don't want to do is to kick off from scratch again. Much of the work with regard to these has, pre has been done by, by previous regimes and we need to know where we are with regard to these before we put them as, a, as, as new items going forward in the agenda. So I think, I think that, 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 that's the main point I wanted to make is that a lot of these are things we've discussed previously and we do need to look at where we are with regard to those before we make them firm items on, on, a, on a work program going forward. Yeah, this is fair comment, Phil. Uh, and so, some of the, the matters that we'll be looking at um, on item five will, are, actually, are actually a backward-looking um, view of what's happened over the last years and hopefully things will have developed and moved on from the initial uh inquiries and yeah. thanks Chair. i think i think that's a critical thing for, for, from from what i've seen here the, the the only thing that that's really new to me on the list is the is the reuse shop which is a, an interesting concept and one which i think we should be encouraging going you know going into the future but the rest are areas that have been discussed before and obviously still need to be discussed because they're unfinished. But they are they are there. And so there is some background work. Hopefully it's been done all these already. Yeah, I guess I, I, I don't know if Dave, David Hughes wants to come in and comment, but I will say that uh, they, they are, they're never ending projects. Yeah, yeah. The, the, once once you start, um, it, it's not the end of a project. It's ongoing, it maybe in a slightly different guise. But um, they are ongoing. David, I don't know if you want to make a comment on yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's fair to say. Phil, you make a good point there. Um, it's fair to say, right, if electric vehicles, it's up to you now far we along the, the journey, you know, where, what we have done so far and what we intend to do. Because uh, I think I brought the electric vehicles to the committee about a year ago. And right. it was just new, new at the time. And so, what we gonna, what we will have this time is the update of how far we've come along that journey, um, what we have found uh, during the the year that we've had the electric vehicles, because uh, we had um, we had a big machine, you know, a waste machine on on loan, on just to have a look how it would. Uh, uh, work in Mercer and it would go up to nil. So, so them the sort of things that we found uh, going forward. You know, but that's they are repetitive, a lot of them. But a lot of them are uh, to give you information how far the journey that we came across. You know, there. Yeah. Thank you, that, Phil. Thank you. Yeah. Can I, can I make one other, one other point, Jim? Yeah. Certainly. What, what I am encouraged by with the forward work program is the fact that now COVID has, um, has, has, has relinquished its grip to, to some extent, that there are suggestions about possible site visits, uh, visits to di by diversity areas, those kinds of things, much more practical ways of seeing this committee out there in the community as opposed to meeting on, you know, on, on Zoom. I think those are very, very encouraging suggestions which would make the work of this committee and the work of uh, the council much more overt, much more open to people. So I, I fully support that. Okay, thank you very much, Phil. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Clive Jones. 
Yeah, just quickly in re relation to Phil's points, um, as I see it, the items that you've gone through, Phil, we want to progress them. So yes. some of these will keep coming back to us until we are absolutely satisfied that um, as a committee and um, cabinet, we've cracked the issue. So, you know, there are issues there which will keep coming back, but we need to progress all the ones that I think that we've uh, agreed to put on the future agenda, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, are we now complete with this section? So, uh, Shell, so the two we got going forward are parks uh, and play with uh, focus on the capital and recycling HWRC performance review. Is that correct? Yes, I'll minute those if that's what you're happy with. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I, first of all, I'm asking if they're the ones forward, but obviously it needs to be carried by the committee first before I, I can't go put my big clawed offers on it. I, I move, Chair. Yeah, second. Um, can I ask you to use your virtual hands then, all those in favour? One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's more than carried. Thank you for that, uh, ladies and gents. If you put your hands down now, please. So, yeah, so the other two items to go forward. Um, with a possible meeting somewhere in between uh, for the rest of the, of the programme. Um, that's the end of item three. Item four, a scrutiny referrals. There are none. And item five is the self-evaluation self report. Um, and for the start of that, I'm going to pass you over to the cabinet member, Councillor David Hughes. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, the environmental well-being corporate self-evaluation. Some report self-evaluation is a rigorous process then enables directors and heads of service and officers to be critically reflective about the outcomes, service provision and leadership and management. This report focuses on completion of self-evaluation undertaken by the Director of Neighbourhood Services. It continued, its content direct relates to the work undertaken to support the delivery within environmental well-being themed within the corporate wellbeing plan that focus on the future wellbeing in our community. The report and the appendix outlined key findings of the self-evaluation activity and highlight areas of good practice along with areas of development. The contact also reflects the priorities of improvement, which will be built into the business improvement plan for the services. The recommendations are found in 2.1, 2.2. Scrutiny to scrutiny committee members review the summary report and key findings laid out in the report, debating its content. And the committee members review the judgments reached, assessing these for val validity with a view to agreeing them. Um, as you can see, the report is is uh, come out with adequate in the three of them, the three uh, areas which is adequate provision and service delivery, leadership and management. Um, so it, the, the service of market itself is adequate. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of good things have happened over the year. Um, one thing that I, th I think we should mention is the resilience shown by our waste services throughout the pandemic, particularly pleasing, the result being the only authority to continue to deliver all collections services throughout. So I think that's worth a special mention and also a special mention to all, all neighbourhood services who worked tirelessly throughout the pandemic 
because they were out there cleaning up when others were working for home and uh, they were out facing the public. So I like to give my thanks before handing over back to Dev. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much, David. Um, before before we move on to questions, um, in order to engage as many members of the committee as possible, I'm going to try to do things a little differently from previous meetings. Once the presentations have been concluded, uh, or even David's presentation now, I'm going to ask the scrutiny members in alphabetical order if they have a question about the, the subject. Each member can ask two questions. Once each question has been answered, I will ask if any other member has a question on the same matter. If so, could they raise their virtual hand? Members will ask the question. The rationale behind this is that we do not keep repeating the same questions. Once we've been around the table, we go around again and so on until all questions have been asked. If a member does not have a question, it's perfectly fine just to say no question. So if you will bear with me, this is something that uh, could possibly come and bite me very severely. <laughs> but it's something that I wanted to try. Um, so we'll go straight into questions. And the first one, the potential two questions would be Councillor Colbrown. Yeah, thank you, Chair. No, no questions for me at this stage. Thank you. No problem. Councillor Jeremy Davis. Uh, no questions for me at this moment, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Clyde Jones. You'd be surprised if I didn't have questions, Chair. Um, I've, I've read this document, um, all 60 pages of it. Um, so <laughs> asking two questions at this stage, I don't know what I'm going to do with the others. But I start off page, page 26. Under waste services, the first dot there, it says the service provides a value for money waste service to residents. Um, now, I presume that in that it includes litter picking. It is all part of the waste services. So my question there is uh, in relation to the litter pickers, and I applaud what uh, Councillor Hughes has said about all the staff who've done a remarkable job during uh, the period of the COVID when we had um, lockdowns, etc. They were first class. Um, and particularly the litter pickers. Um, now, somebody else in the report, Chair, it says that um, the cleanliness regime is that they are able to do these routes every eight to ten days. But unless they've increased, um, the figure I, I have is that there were 14 litter pickers covering the whole of the county borough. Um, and if you take into account um, holidays, sickness, etc., you're not going to have all 14 out on any one day on these rounds. And my question, therefore, is when do we have sufficient litter pickers? And is everybody um, happy that these uh, tend to be cleaned on average approximately every 10 days? Um, because like all councillors and members of the public, I drive past areas where they clean the following day there's litter there and then it accumulates over the next eight nine ten days um so that's my first question do you want the officer to answer that first question chair and then i'll come yeah. back to my second yes, question please. yeah so. rob are you gonna answer that one yeah thank you chair uh, firstly, Clive, um, no, street cleansing is not uh, referred to in, in waste. Waste is, is separate. Uh, it's a separate section. That's my first point. Uh, to answer your question, do we have sufficient workforce in street cleansing? 
In my opinion, we don't. We lost over 50% during the austerity period. And as you say, the uh, frequency now is, not, in my opinion, is not adequate. Um, it's up to you, the councillors, to decide you know, if that can be improved. But to answer your question, I don't think there is enough resources. One of the problems, as you pointed out correctly, was that when someone is on sick or on holiday, that is not covered. It used to be, but that was part of the austerity saving. So any sickness or holiday is not covered. So if you've got four or five staff off, those four or five staff are not covered uh, by an additional person. For instance, last week, through a combination of COVID and a long-term sickness, we had, believe it or not, four street cleansers working in the borough. And that is the, the scale of the situation. Thank you, Rob. I, I think that's a really serious issue, which we need to examine very closely. Um, as I've said, I think the existing number of staff, uh, as far as they can, do a, a really superb job. But there's only X number of there on any one day, and uh, it is a seven day service as well. Um, I I believe that they, they are really up against it. And the number that we've got there, because they've got set rounds, um, needs very close examination. And I I would like to see the officers coming back um, to the student committee and saying to us in the report what the level of staffing for litter pickings, litter pickers should be. My second question, um, I'll encompass it all in one, but there are a number of points made during the 60 page report about staffing. One, for example, is the change behavior officer to do with, I think, um, the recycling, um, et cetera. Now, this has been referred to on a few occasions in the past. I haven't seen that there's steps being taken to fill this post. And again, if we're going to do something and crack this whole situation about um, getting people to put the right things in the right containers and don't put food waste in the black whip bin, which 40 to 50 percent of, of them are still doing, we named this change behaviour officer appointed ASAP. But the rest of the report chair refers to, for example, a vacancy in building control. So I want to know what's happened with that. In the engineering section, they refer to um, that they re require, um, I think they mean increase in staff there and resources, i.e. finance. So I'd like to know what's happened there. And I think I'm right in saying that uh, they need to increase the staffing in the planning department. And if if Phil Roberts is there and can answer that point, I'd like him to confirm to all the committee that if you go out to appoint a planning officer, is it right that you stipulate that you want um, five, at least five years in service as a qualified planning officer before they would consider an appointment. Thank you. Any of the officers going to pick that one up? The relevant officers, please. Or David Hughes. I can speak for um, the building control. The advert been put out uh, maybe three times now, and nothing, nobody's applying. So. You know, we can't, I think we're looking at another way now. I don't know whether Ken's on the the uh, call on the committee here, but I know they're looking at other ways. They've got a new apprentice there now, so they are looking. And with the new building control uh, processes that happen now, they're going to have to do extra work with the cladding on machines, on on, on buildings. So they all got to become uh, uh, qualified 
in different degrees of working on on different buildings. So we we'll have people out on training there. So you know, without building control, they are making money. It's actually bringing revenue into the the borough, but we we haven't been able to um, employ anybody because no one suitable have been applying for the jobs. Could, could I pursue that, Chair, with Councillor Hughes? Is it the fact that the salary levels that uh, we pitch these jobs at um, is not competitive enough and other authorities are making appointments and we are not because we are not paying the right salary? I, th I, I don't think it's only us. Other authorities are finding it difficult to recruit building control people because there is such a shortage of, of them. But the private sector, they are paying a lot more money than than we do. So um, that's why we probably, that could be a, a reason why people aren't playing. And the same probably goes for engineers. Yeah, well, there's your answer then. The private sector are paying more and we can't compete with them. We need these officers because there are statutory duties which we must adhere to. And I think the, the, the uh, salary levels clearly need to be looked at. I'll, otherwise, we're going to be in serious problem. When we're talking about, you know, the building control section. There's a very small staffing structure there. So you get somebody there decides to leave or somebody goes off sick and you immediately you're in trouble. Um, so um, I, I don't know if, if you or Hugh Roberts is going to answer the point they made about the planning officers and the five years experience, five years experience. I can I can ask Al if you want to chair. Yes, yes, please, uh, Hugh. Yeah, it, it, uh, Councillor Jones, it uh, it depends really on the, on what what planning job you're going out for, I suppose. Um, in terms of the years of experience you require, if it's a a junior planning officer post, um, the 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 years are are much less, perhaps. Uh, in in terms, if it's a principal planning officer post, obviously you need uh, more experience to deal with those more complex applications and. Uh, and policies that you're looking at. So it really depends on the post uh, you're going out for. Uh, we haven't gone out for a plan officer's post for some time now. So uh, um, yeah, times have changed obviously. So we need to look at uh, different methods of trying to uh, to recruit officers if, if and when that happens. Uh, Hugh, could I ask you through the chair, how many vacant planning officer's posts do you have currently? We haven't got any vacant plan officers post, but we've got a vacant uh, conservation officer post at the mm -hmm. moment, um, which you're probably aware of. We've been out many times to try and recruit um, and haven't managed to uh, get, well, anyone interested or anyone suitable for that post anyway. So uh, yeah, that, that's a vacant post at the moment in, in our section. It's the conservation heritage officer post. Uh, very quickly, I know Carwin's chair is just to put his hand up, but going back to Councillor Hughes, um, in the case of the change behaviour officer, did you say the post is due to be advertised? Uh, I, I can answer that, Chair, if you want me to. All right, sorry. Yes, please, Steve. Um, yeah, it, it was advertised um, a number of months ago. Um, we carried out the interviews back in May, uh, appointed a person into the role. Um, it, it, it turns out uh, quite recently that the notice um, that person had to give to the current employer was three months. So we've now finally got a start date of the 1st of August. Right, right. OK, thank you, Steve. So, so, fine, so that person will be fully in post in August then. Thank you. Yes. Carwin, are you, are you going to see another part of it? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, Yes, yeah, it's, it's the point that's been covered really. I mean, in engineering, we've got four uh, vacant posts uh, that we, we're just struggling to fill. Um, and it is mainly down to salaries, uh, what we're offering, uh, but we're not the only local authority. <coughs> um, other local authorities are, are struggling to recruit engineers as well. Um, so at the minute, the private sector are just offering 
uh, very high salaries um, because they know the need is out there um, and we just can't compete at the moment. Okay, thank you for that, Karen. Uh, sorry, Clyde, we're going to run away from you now. Moving on to Councillor Paula Layton. Do you have any questions or do you have two questions, Paula? Yes, but I'll give you um together if that's okay, Chair. Um, it's on the uh, page 27, Apex A, the waste services. I just wanted to ask, it says the increase of amount of recyclable, increase the, uh, the amount of recyclable materials that we'll collect to ensure that we achieve future recovery plans and reduce the amount of residual waste collection to achieve recovery plans as well, recovery targets. How, how are we going to go forward with that? Obviously to improve that target. Yeah. Paul, I mean, is, this, is this you one, Paul? Is, is it mine, Councillor? Oh, you Steve, is it? Right, sorry. Think, um, yes, Councillor, the, 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 there's a number of ways. Um, <clears throat> One that Councillor Jones just sort of alluded to was the behaviour change officer. Um, their priority will be to sort of target areas that don't participate in our recycling services very well. So um, to increase the recycling, we get out of there and reduce the amount of residual waste to uh, energy from waste as well. Um, another one is is that we've we've got um, we've just purchased in cab technology for our vehicles, which will help us easily identify missed collections so that we're not duplicating bins that we may have picked up earlier in the day and go back to pick up um, another full bin um, as a miscollection. Um, we we need better communication to go out to our residents um, to make sure that, that, that everybody is maximising the recycling. Um, but the key element is is that um, we, we need to maximise the amount of recycling coming out of the wheel bins. We, we'll have other projects as well coming up in there. There are materials that, that um, we can collect for recycling, but at the moment they, they're not en economically um, feasible or not. It, it, it wouldn't be efficient to do it. We, we've had a study by RAP Cymru into collecting plastics at the curbside. Um, I don't know what the delay is in the report, but that, that happened last July. So we're still waiting on a report with recommendations for that. Should it be positive um, and, and, you know, we, we, we can fund the project, then there's the possibility of collecting uh, plastic film at the curbside. Uh, yeah. We've recently introduced battery recycling that, that we need to sort of increase participation in as well. So the, the, to summarise, the two main elements really are uh, to get as much recycling out of those wheel bins through taking additional materials for recycling out and increasing the capture rate that we've got from either those doing it but not recycling as much as they can or those just not recycling at all. Right, so it's basically down to the residents. So basically you need to be more educated again on what goes in what bin to, to meet the targets, yeah? I, I think you're right. We, we can increase the amount of materials we collect. There are some materials out there that we don't currently collect, as I just said, but we, we know that the majority um, of those that don't recycle um, have so much recycling in their wheel bins, and it, it has a, a double impact, really. Every time you take some recycled materials out of the wheel bin, you're also reducing the materials going to energy from waste. So the impact there for, towards our recovery target is is significant. OK, thank you. Thank you, Chair. No problem. Bill, I assume that your, your hand is up to discuss matter related to this to Paula's question. Yes, I am. I support Paula on this because a couple of years ago, we, we were recycling plastic bags and all bits and pieces. So I don't know what to that. But also I had to go down the green waste the week to get some bags. And I was given a, a grey plastic bag to collect batteries, like you said. But nobody seems to know that we're collecting batteries. And also, when my partner put the batteries out, <laughs> there was nothing left for it to uh, replace them. And I think I lost out. Uh, yes, Councillor. I, I think that, that the main reason, it, 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 I don't like to put the, the excuse on COVID too often, but because we couldn't uh, distribute the bags through our normal methods, i.e. the civic centre, libraries, community centres and the like, um, we struggled to distribute them really because we, we purchased these just prior to um, COVID hitting. Um, obviously, that things have opened up now uh, where our libraries, community centres and the like have opened. So we've given all these um, uh, all these addresses, um, boxes of these bags. Uh, we, we've, we've got information on, on our website, social media posts go out. Um, I, I, I think 
it, it's that sort of material where we, we don't expect residents to put the batteries out if they've only got a few in the bag. We expect them to fill them. So unless it's sort of Christmas time, the, the, these bags too take a considerable amount of time to um to fill. Um, so yes, it, it's, it's something we need to improve. And I, th I think our communication there could be uh, now that COVID is coming to an end, that then we can sort of really ramp that up. Can I come back, Chair? Because Steve, when he said a lot of people use batteries now, because a lot in the house is everybody. And uh, this bag was chock a block because we take the bags up to Liggles or whatever, they recycle batteries. So so when the, when we when we with a plastic bag, can, can they leave a plastic bag like they do other things? Because we need these bags to put them in, or, we put this, or, or can we put in clear bags? They can go in clear bags. Um, that that, that right, would be great. fine. No problem. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Jeanette. Um, thank you, Councillor Leighton. Uh, John McCarthy, do you have any questions? You're on mute, John. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get off. You can't hear me, can you? Can you? You know that? Yeah, I no, have any questions. No, not at all, thanks. No, no questions. Thank you, John. Uh, Councillor Bill Smith, back to you again. Oh, thank you very much. Everybody, right. I can make a comment first, Chair, yeah? and then ask the question after. This this report, that was massive. And it's for a full year, and it deals with everything. Could we split it up every six months or something? Because for us to take it through everything else, a lot of things have been done for us to know. And for us to try to improve the service, because you know, look, like the discussion we're having now with batteries, let the pick in bits and pieces. So every six months could be a bit better. Bill, can, I stop, you think that? Bill, can I stop you there? It's something that we're going to be discussing a little later. As okay. I fair enough. Right, I got I, two I won't count that as one of your questions. Right, fair enough. I got two questions. Which side comes to Jones made a comment about staffing on certain departments we can't do. But have we talked to social services because they've got people working in the greenhouses that can do the litter picking and at the recycling when they're short? Because if people are there working, they, they're doing uh, making um, flower pots and bits and pieces, they're not capable of doing certain things. Can, can we have a chat with them and see what the best way forward? Uh, oh, I don't know who's the best one for that one. Anybody going to come in on that one? Or can you come back to me on it then? Yeah, if we can make note of uh, Councillor Smith's question and we'll, we'll get an answer back for you, Bill. No problem. And the other question is, how much damage is caused by um by our workforce on the bins and you no know, the little bins we got nobody put them tidy and we've just been thrown about and that's a big issue I've had with us. So you so your question is what what's the cost and damage or, or replacing them? Yeah. Steve, can you get any idea of that? Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I haven't got an answer for you, uh, Councillor, but it, it is something we, we can look into and, and, and try and find that that figure. It would be difficult to isolate the, the replacement bins due to damage because you, you get stolen ones as well, uh, new ones, um, and they're all sort of categorised out of replaced and the replacement bins. So I can certainly look into it and see if I can, I, I can filter something. OK, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Starr, please. Yeah, just, just a couple of observations, Chair, rather than questions. First of all, I'd like to, um, to support what Councillor Jones and Councillor Smith said about the length of the report. Um, I didn't have the time, possibly, to climb to go through it all. I gave up at about page 40, I think. Um, 
Yeah, <laughs> I was nodding a little bit. I, I do, I do think that reports of this size coming to a committee, which is only meeting once a month, uh, is, is a big ask for us to take everything in. There's so much information in there that could be a whole year's worth of scrutiny there. Uh, and I do, I, I would like to support the comments that are made about the size of the report and the fact that it needs to be more streamlined. And perhaps that could be the case in most of the reports as well. Where we're looking for the salient points, the key points, and I, I think. Looking through this report was like you know not being able to see the wood for the trees. So uh, so, so that, that's my first observation. And secondly, I am encouraged though in various parts in the report, as a representative on this committee of community groups, I'm encouraged by the um, by the one of the areas for development is for uh, waste services to engage more with community groups in the Merthyr Borough. And I would be very interested to find out what that proposal actually entails and how that is going to be um, demonstrated in the future. So I'm encouraged by the will. What I need to see now is how the will is actually turned into practice. Um, is there someone that can give a, a, a forward sight to Mr. Starr's uh, query? I say I say new chair. It's on. Um, ooh, I think it's on page page eighteen nineteen. Yeah, and it does mention the fact that uh, it's, it's under street cleansing, under street cleansing bereavement services. Uh, the the new, one of the areas to develop is to engage more frequently with wills tidy and with community groups and introduce community. I'm not interested in, and I'm representing the community groups, and I would like to be able to say to my, my own group and say to Ponstickers and some of the other groups around that the council is interested in engaging with us in the work that we do on a voluntary basis. Right. Uh, Rob, can you um, give, a, give an answer to that, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. The, the uh, street cleansing manager isn't... Uh on this uh, call but i can i can answer that yeah we, we're already supporting a number of community groups um by giving them uh, bags etc litter pickers and also we work with keep Will tidy to carry out um like dog hit days where we'll have a, a little port of a caravan uh, placed in the town center um community action groups as, as well can get involved so we are looking to expand that it's not um uh, not all areas are covered. There are some um, prevalent community groups, such as the Ponstick one, but there are more appearing all the time. So we'll be working with the community groups, uh, trying to get them to encourage, you know, um, more community uh, involvement in litter picking and uh, other community activities. Yeah. Okay. Can, can I come in? Uh, yeah, um, also, as well as that, uh, our street cleansing teams to go out and collect the bags that have been recycled or the recycling um, when we put put them up in fairness uh, a phone call to uh, Darren or to Paul and in fairness they go out and pick up the stuff uh, ASAP be honest with you. so I yeah, think we're is, looking it, to uh, to uh, work with the community groups yeah that's done very effectively actually that that's that, that we can all complain about that side of things what uh, to be honest we haven't got a huge amount of complaints we just are encouraged by the fact that the the council and its officers are willing to work with community groups i like to take that message back thank you very much david uh paula Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to say uh, what David was basically saying, because we've got an action, uh, a community action group here up in Dowlas, and I've got to be honest, Rob's team, and they are spot on. You know, they pick up the bags and they, they're there for us, whatever support we need in the community. So, yeah, I have to agree on that. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, uh, Clive, I missed you out. I think I missed you off the last uh, last question. Oh, so it's okay, fine, Chair. Um, I, I, I've um, I've reduced my questions considerably uh, for you to know, but I do have another three. So, is it possible to ask them now, or are you going to go back and round in turn? Um, I can have my go first. <laughs> okay. Because I can. Um. On page 44 in the centre and right first bullet, 
This is regarded development control and building control. Um, is there another local authority that provides this service in-house that we could tap into? This is regarding to explore, explore the possibility of the same solicitor scrutinizing all enforcement notices and then undertaking any subsequent court cases. So is there another authority that has their own, as an in-house solicitor? And could we tap into that and would there be any savings from that? Sorry, Chair, do you want me to answer that? Yeah. Um, I, yes, think the issue, I think the issue raised in there is that uh, we have got a solicitors that do both. So we've got a solicitor that gives us advice on our enforcement notices and any notices we serve, but that solicitor doesn't take it on to the courts. It's passed to another a solicitor that does the court work for whatever reason. So it's it's that that we're looking at um, in house to see if we can make that a continuous uh, service rather than a, 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 a sort of dis slightly disjointed service that we pass from one solicitor to another. Okay, thank you very much for that here. Um, and then my second question then is on page uh, 50, again with development control and building control. Um, it's Deve development and building controls, the second bullet point under that, under that heading. Elected members have a significant influence on the workload of the department, with many reporting breaches of planning control and requesting further information and advice on uh, submitted applications. I, I don't understand the rationale behind this comment. Are you saying that elected members shouldn't do this? If not, what should they do? No, no, it, absolutely contrary, really. Elected members should be contacting us with regard to breaches of planning control and any aspects of planning. That's what we want uh, from a, a plan, certainly from my point of view. Um, your eyes are far better than our one enforcement officer to look at uh, breaches of planning control for us so we can act swiftly. I think the point being made there is that we've only got one enforcement officer probably to look at all those issues. Um, so, I, that that's probably the point being made is 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 you know is, is the capacity for one enforcement well we've got two enforcement officers but it's only one post so they they part time they they they, they, they share the uh, enforcement officers role so that's that's the issue uh, I think we have is the is the capacity issue and we ha then have to obviously look at those cases to see which ones we uh, that for the most priority that we take them forward I think that that's the point that's being made there. Yeah, I can appreciate that. And now that you've explained it, it 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 sounds different. It's just when I read it, perhaps it was just the way I read it. Um, but the term used uh, a significant significant influence on the workload. That's that's normally a a negative. But thank you for that. And now you've explained it, I'm happy with that. Um, right, going back around the list, uh, Councillor Colbran, do you have any queries, questions? No, I'm fine. Thanks, Chair. Councillor Davis. Oh, thank you, Chair. Back to Councillor Clive Jones. I think we'll up into three questions, Clive. <laughs> um, first Ten, one I is reckon, on... Chair. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Ten, I reckon, Chair. You know what I'm saying. Page 34, and it's the eighth dot down. Um, I couldn't believe what I was seeing with this, but it says revisit the possibility of employing external enforcement officers to reduce litter and dog folding. We've certainly been down the road of employing external officers for litter and that didn't work. I hope that that suggestion has been, you know, I don't understand why that's been put in there by the officers. And as far as dog fodder is concerned, we should be, I don't think we have, we should be in, in appointing um, a dog warden. There's enough work for the dog warden uh, dealing with stray dogs and the consequence of dog folding to sink a battleship. Um, so somebody, can somebody clarify that there? 
I know we're going on to dog folding and that's in very mental health, but uh, it's all about uh, being picked up. I mean, the dog fouling mess is picked up by our staff out of the dog bins. Um, I'll come in there, Chair, if you want. Yes, please, Rob. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Um, I speak on behalf of Paul Jones, the, the manager who put that comment in. I think what he was trying to establish was it's in the column for uh, improvement or possible priorities for improvement. So in his mind, he was thinking that, um, you know, the, the dog fouling and the, the littering enforcement is something that um, comes up uh, every year. So he's just put that back in there um for scrutiny to to look at basically i'm not saying that's the answer it wasn't very su successful when we did have it and i doubt we'll ever go back there but you know as a as a way to improve he's just put that in on his priority list so it's something that we could explore but you know i, I don't think that's uh in reality is going to happen no chair i don't think we should be going down that route at all of, of engaging external companies um, we've had a bad experience there, and I don't think we should revisit that, frankly. Uh, my other question is on the next page, page 35, and it's, and it's in the middle column, Waste Services, and it's the one, two, three, fourth dot down, and it, I quote, investigate the potential for accepting trade recycling at HWRCs. Um, I think that's an interesting uh, point there. How far have we got with that? Because I would have thought if that's accepted, there's no issue that that's going to increase our recycling targets. Uh, yeah, I can answer that, Chair, if that's OK. <clears throat> yes, Steve. OK. Uh, yes, councillor. It, it, it's something we, we've um, we, we've looked at, we've investigated oh, for a number of years now, but only sort of briefly sort of touched on on the subject uh, because it has does have sort of significant um, impacts on us um, in accepting sort of large quantities of additional waste throughout sites. Um, but it's something we, we've picked up again now, along with uh, looking at reviewing our van permit scheme. Um, it because our current recycling rate is um, it's provisional at the moment um, so don't quote me on it because it, it, it can change uh, we won't know the, the exact figure until about October November but we're on nearly 67 percent 66.8 percent it's so it's a significant jump that we need to make in the next few years 24 25 to the 70 percent and we, we've got incremental in-house um, targets that will help us achieve that um, but as I mentioned earlier, we, we, we know that the majority of recycling that we need needs to come out of the, the wheel bins, but looking at alternatives as well, just so that we make sure that, that, that we uh, maximise what we get, is looking at that opportunity for uh, trade recyclables coming through the site. So it's something that I, I know Judith and Paul have picked up over the last couple of weeks, um, and that will progress now. We'll, um, we, we'll meet about it over the coming weeks, month or so, um, and obviously put the relevant reports up um, when we've got our recommendations. So Stephen, through you, Chair, will that report, is that something that will go to, for example, the full council meeting? Is that what you were thinking of doing? Um, I, I'm not sure at the moment. Um, it, it, it's it's with Judith at the moment. Um, but yeah, we, we we've been asked to sort of uh, look at the pros and cons of this. You, you've got numerous sort of um, options contained w within sort of providing that sort of service. Um, initially, I think we want to look at taking in the materials that don't cost us anything um, or are an actual income for the authority, and sort of uh, not include the sort of materials that, that we we pay a significant amount for. So, um, as I said, it, it, it's early stages at the moment. Um, it, it's only sort of verbal discussions, but it, it's something that's on our, our recovery plan agenda. Right. I, I would stay, sorry, on that. I, I noticed in the report somewhere, I haven't got the page in front of me, but there's an issue with um, carpets and another item about um, could people are entitled to bring these up to the civic committee sites. There seems to be an issue about about those, and I can't remember the second eight terms, Steve. You probably uh, yeah, we, yes, we, we, we've got some what we term as being sort of problematic items. 
where for years and years uh, where we've been able to recycle and we, we've been getting uh, reports back from our reprocessors that they recycle in 100% of them, but uh, uh, mainly due to NRW investigations um, and contractual sort of discussions, it turns out that some of these are not being 100% recycled. So mattresses, for instance, um, we, we get a recovery rate back of about 50%. Uh, wood, similarly, that jumps month to month. Uh, carpets, uh, we couldn't find a, uh, an outlet for our carpets for um, a number of months. That, that's that been more or less resolved now. We, we found a new contractor for carpets. They won't take underlay, so it, it, it's not as good a contract as we had before, but it, it at least is something counting towards our recovery target. Um, and I, I think this is due to the NRW um, and Welsh Government imposing stricter uh, guidelines around what can be recycled and what can't. Mm. So. Um, it, it does impact on our recovery rate. Um, uh, our recovery rate has stayed more around the 66, more or less around the 66, 67 percent for uh, the last three years now. Uh, that's not to say we're not going forward because we, we, we've been hit by these sort of negative impacts, such as not being able to count as much recycling as we did before. So we, we, we're actually improving, but by it's sort of one step forward and two steps back. But it, it's something we, we, we have to live with and, and sort of find resolutions to. Thank you. Thank you for that, Steve. Um, David Hughes, do you wish to come in on that point? Yeah, uh, if one of the things I brought with Judith in our first meeting was uh, about trade waste and about using, uh, the use of vans going to the the centre. You know, we uh, we get a lot of complaints about people having no other access but a little van to take things up and they have been turned away. So we are looking into the possibility of having a van. However, they must be recycling materials brought up in the van. Um, as far as trade waste is, um, we're looking at costs of what money we can make out of if somebody brings the trade waste. Obviously, uh, we don't have a detrimental uh, thing on our targets but if we can increase our targets we're looking at all ways so we are looking at it and, and I'm sure we will I would I would suggest we come to scrutiny before we go to council with a new report um, which we're looking at so that scrutiny can look through the report first and and watch it out before we come to council you know because sometimes we bring things to council and and I think sometimes the uh, scrutiny should have had a look at it and see what uh, they think of it and wash any uh, any things that uh, we feel shouldn't be in that report. You know. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, appreciate that. I will certainly uh, I'd be happy to, to oversee that one. Um, one. One last one, Chair. Um, before, you move, I, before, you move, before you move on away from HWRCs, Steve, if we were to take trade waste in, do we need to change the licenses for the HWRCs? Uh, no, we don't, Chair. When we took over the sites um, about three and a half years ago um, from Potters, uh, we had to change the permits. So um, with sort of forward planning, we decided to increase the amount of tonnage we could take in um, So and include trade waste on that as well. So the permits are, are fit for uh, trade waste. Marvellous. Thank you very much. A good foresight. Sorry, Clive, back to you. Oh. Sorry, thank you, Chair. Um, page 47 is in the bottom half of the page. It's under the hi highways heading, it's the second dot down. Um, and it says here, in addition, it would be more cost effective for highways if they were to have administrative support. For example, someone who could answer routine queries, deal with general requests, and applications and updated completed works orders. This would allow technical staff to focus on actual highways activities that they pay. <coughs> so it's been put in there. That to me seems a really sensible suggestion to improve the administrative efficiency in highways. So I presume this will be a new post. So what's the problem in not progressing that? Uh, can I take that, Chair? Yes, certainly. Da, da. Yeah. Hi, Clive. Um, yeah. It's it's an issue uh, going back again to austerity. Um, again, um, 
five years ago we had three administration staff within within highways um until two weeks ago we only had half a post um and and that was actually carrying out all sort of queries updating information invoices uh you know all the general admin information um with a small restructure within sort of fleet uh, and uh, a loss of one post there there was a, a small amount of money made available to um, upgrade the sort of uh, part time admin post to one full time admin post. So from about uh, you know, beginning of the month. So yeah, about four weeks ago, um, uh, highways now have one full time admin post. Um, not perfect, but um, a, a massive improvement on uh, what we had previously. So. Correct me, perhaps I haven't uh, read it right. The half a post you've got or had, was that individual made into a full time post or is this a? Uh, it, it, it was advertised, um, but but the person who added was the part time post, uh, part person carrying out the part time post as she wanted uh, to become full time. Full -time. Right. Yeah. OK, that's great. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Is that your free clave? For this time, it certainly is. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Leighton. No questions, Chair. No further questions, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor no Smith. No questions. Yeah, I got one question, Chair. On page um, bottom of 32, 33, I, I am traffic management. Could somebody tell me where we are with the active travel policy that we? kicked off and started consultation on because the menu was there so I don't know what was happened. Um where's that by in the report there? Oh, it's on engineering and it's there uh, chair on 32 33 and it says on th page 33 top end traffic management service involved investigation implement request for new traffic orders. Well, Traffic, active travel is new traffic orders because it brings in and crossings, tra traffic calming, everything. So I just want an update where we are with that policy as well. Certainly, well, like Carwin has, uh, has volunteered for this one. Well, Mr. Morris, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Morris, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, apology, I, I don't quite understand the, the question. I, I mean, Ac Active Travel does sit outside of engineering now. Um, it does. All oh, right. Well, it, it, on it, it, it's on the report. report. I'm reading the report. It's, so, are you asking about the. the, the where, are we, uh, where are we? So, somebody get back information or not then on the next meeting? Yeah, okay. I'll be the best. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Bill. Uh, another question, Bill, or not? No, I'm quite happy. Yeah. Uh, Philip Start, do you have any further questions? Yeah, just one, Chair. Um, yeah. I'm not sure whether it's connected with waste services or with street cleansing, because the overlap is, is, is obviously quite large. But I couldn't find in the report any reference to this new legislation that was brought in in Wales earlier on this year, which will enable local authorities to find brand owners if their packaging is littered and can't be recycled. You know, we have a, a hell of a lot of branded litter around the streets of uh, the streets of Merthyr. If it's Coke bottles or McDonald's wrappers or KFC or kebabs, whatever. I couldn't find any reference in the report to this, uh, this new legislation, which enables local authorities to take on the big brands and fine them or penalise them if they their stuff is found to be littering. I just wondered why why it's not there. I, I, I'd have thought the opportunity is quite a good one for the local authority to, to perhaps now begin a policy of, uh, of, 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 of dealing with branded litter. Is there anyone available to address that? Do you want to answer that, Chair? Yes, please, Rob. Again, on behalf of uh, Paul, who's not here, um, obviously these reports were written some time ago, so any new legislation wouldn't have been taken uh, into account. I, I'm not aware of of that, to be honest. Um, so we, we'll have to check up on that. I know we have um, 
uh, regular meetings with the likes of you know managers of McDonald's etc because they have a duty of care they have a duty of care to clean outside their shop fronts which in fairness to McDonald's they do they, they allocate staff not all um, shops and, and businesses are so forthcoming with help to be honest so we, we need someone to chase them up on that uh, and that's something that we are looking at but I wasn't aware of any legislation where we could actually fine um, businesses for dropping you know a McDonald's wrapper for instance because what we've always been made to believe is that once the the wrapper has gone from the business then it's down to the individual and if that individual drops the litter then they are responsible for it. Yeah I, th I, th I think probably finding them for dropping it was the wrong thing to say but basically they, they should have a duty of care to prevent uh, any littering of their branded products and if those branded products are found I've been reading legislation here then they can be penalised according to the amount and type of packaging that is 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 seen around the streets. Things like pl uh, uh, plastic straws, for instance, which can't be recycled. I think the legislation came out in April this year, 2022, new rules in Wales. England and Northern Ireland dropped it. Wales and Scotland introduced it. So it's I think it's worth the local authority, to, you know, investigating the possibility of uh, of dealing with branded waste. Because I, I, I'm sure that, that 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 is something which is supported by by uh, by Welsh government. Thank you for that, Phil. Uh, very interesting point. Um, do you have any another question, Phil? Yeah, just on on on. I'm just looking to see what it is. It's called the Extended Producer Responsibility Scheme. And it 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 places responsibility on the, uh, the the producers and the users of branded products to dispose of their waste in a in a sensible manner. And it was adopted in Wales in April 2022. Oh, so do you mind if I do you mind if I come in on that one, Chair? <clears throat> come in, Steve. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I didn't quite um, understand. Um, I, I, I hadn't heard of the legislation when you first mentioned it, um, Phil. But um, but June, you're saying it's the um, extended producer responsibility legislation. It it was adopted in April because this legislation it is far more wider reaching than the, 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 um, the, the litter aspect. Um, although it's been adopted, the legislation hasn't actually um, come into force yet. It's still being discussed by Welsh government. And I, I think it, it, it's quite an extensive timeline on this because it, it's quite a complicated set of legislation. So I think the proposed date for this, and I think it's coming in in conjunction with um, uh, 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 the DRS scheme, which is the deposit return scheme, whereby um, there's a possibility of vending machines at certain locations where the, the public can um, dispense with their, their plastic bottles, cans and the like, um, and they, they get a, a financial reward for it. So I think the two elements of this legislation are coming in together, but I think the timeline is something like late uh, 2023 at the moment. I think it's 2024, actually, Steve. So it might be. It's, a, it's a long way off. It's just, just it's yeah. an observation, the fact that if we look at areas for development, then this, this should be one which needs to be brought into some sort of future planning. I, I, I definitely feel and, and, and yeah we, 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 we attend lots of conferences seminars uh, meetings on, on on this legislation and have done for the last year or so because it we are not sure how it's going to impact on our recycling rate because obviously the public taking their plastic bottles and cans uh, back to local supermarkets or vending machines in parks and, and the like is going to mean that, that we are not capturing them through our curbside schemes or through the HRCs. So th th there's a lot of discussion at the moment. So yeah, yeah. I don't know if that helps, but there you go. It, it does. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, Chair. That's that's that, that's all from me. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Phil. And thank you, Steve. Um, back around in the circle, Councillor Jones, please. Councillor Clive Jones. Um, is this for questions now? Yeah, we're still on questions, Clive. Oh, right. No, I, I haven't got anything in particular. No, Chair. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Leighton. Uh, no, Chair, thank you. Uh, Councillor Smith. OK, Chair. And Phil Starr. No, that's OK, Chair. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, I have got one or two. I'm going to try and find them back in my papers now.
Um, on street scene, page 35, second bullet point. Um, can 106 or sil can section 106 money or sill money be used for this purpose? Where am I by? This was about um, working on green areas and playgrounds in new developments. Yeah, second bullet point down in the centre. Yeah, Chair, do you want me to answer that? Yes, please. Yes, um, section one hundred six and still can be used for uh, developer contributions. Uh, I'm sure planning uh, he will be able to uh, give the details, but um, there, there is an arrangement with the SIL money, that's community infrastructure levy money, yeah. where uh, we can bid for the, the, the pot of money that's there. Uh, we have been successful in the past, um, like the playground in Hugh Gehrig was the one, for instance, where we've used some SIL money on that. So we can make um, requests to use that SIL money and it, there is a panel which sits uh, intermittently who will decide on what the, the money is to be spent on. Um, over the, over uh, the past uh, years, we have been successful in Section 106 agreements, uh, but not so many in, in recent years where large developments have contributed to the, um, uh, the playground or playing field um in in that vicinity or they they are asked by the planning department to actually provide the facility within the development so that can be done also uh Hugh might want to come in and, and give the the details on the the planning aspect thank you Rob. Hugh? yeah thank you chair just to clarify really on uh sill and section 106 agreements um it used to be the case that Section 106 agreements could ask for um, off-site contributions to play facilities. Um, SIL has taken over that insofar as uh, the SIL is taken off uh, a percentage of uh, the cost of the development and, and it, it all goes in one pot and it, that pot of money is is for uh, to be spent on strategic issues. Um, it's called actually a one, two, three list with a number of different projects on it. But as Rob said, you have to bid for that. Uh, there's a sell group. Uh, you have to bid for that uh, money to, to to spend on it. So just to clarify that Section 106 is, can only relate to the development in site, site itself. So uh, for example, uh, affordable housing on the site, or th they can provide a play, play facility on the site, which could be subject to a, a Section 106 agreement. Um, any off-site contributions, such as uh, contributions to classrooms, education and stuff like that, have to come through the SIL process. So, um, yeah, it, it's basically Section 106 agreements on-site, SIL arrangements off-site, which are strategic issues. Thank you for that. Thank you for the explanation, Hugh. Much appreciated. And Rob, um, i got one more. Uh, page 47, bullet point two. Um, and... Uh, Parks and countries. I do. Sorry, Rob. Uh, it says continued work with various departments on the refurbishment of the play area at the splash pad in Cabartha Park. Um, refurbishment was recently carried out to the splash pad, but it's still not fully open. Do we know the reason why? Well, the the management of the uh, the splash pad now is under the the the, the trust. Uh, chair, so I'm not entirely sure what um, what is the problem there at the moment. I know the refurbishment was done. Uh, we had some involvement in um, looking at the refurbishment of the equipment, mm -hmm. and all the wet pore safety servicing was uh, completed. Uh, so I, I don't know. I could find out and come back to you on that one, but I, I'm not entirely sure what the the reasoning in is behind the uh, the closure. Uh, as I say, it's the leisure trust that. Do the management of the the pool side, the wet side of that now? Yeah, and I, that was my impression as well. But I, then it appears in in this report, and I thought that was strange. What what page was that? Sorry, chair. Page forty seven, second bullet point down on the left. Continued work with various departments on the refurbishment of the play area at the splash. It's the play area at the splash. But sorry, I misread it. My apologies. 
the play area at the splash pad, but it's still. Yeah, I, I think that um, what's meant there is that we've had some involvement. Obviously, the, there is no experience within the, the trust currently on children's play. So we've been acting as um, a consultant, if you like, uh, advising on uh, the wet pour, safety servicing and the playground equipment. So we, we've been working with the trust. But as far as the management of it is concerned, then they are solely responsible. So it, it, we've been working as a, in the agent with them to pick the equipment and the safety servicing and making sure everything is up to standards. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you for the explanation. Uh, okay. Phil Starr, next, please. Yeah, just, just, just uh, that's probably a case of when the report was actually written because I was up there last week and it was fully operational. The splash pad was fully operational and and the playground uh, adjacent to it as well. So it is it is operational. It was being very well used and uh, and, and and all the feedback was very positive as well. So um, I, I, I I can report that it is being used and it is fully operational. Thanks, Thank you for that. That's good news. Very good news. Um, and so Jeremy Davis is hand up then. No, I was going to say the same as well. Like down the park quite a lot, and uh, I know it's been well used. So it's um it's all good feedback from what I've seen. They're just going to back it up. So absolutely great. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to open it for the last time now. Does anyone else have any more questions on the on the report? Nope. Right then. So in that case, we'll move the recommendations that the scrutiny committee members review the summary report and key findings laid out in the report debating its content. And to two committee members review the judgments reached assessing those for validity with a view to agreeing them. Do we all agree then, committee members? All those in favour, could you raise your virtual hands, please? One, two, three. I believe that's unanimous, Shell, is it? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. If you could lower your hands. The officers now can can attend, stay for the rest of the meeting if they wish. Otherwise, they are, they are free to leave. Thanks all anyway. Bye. Thank you very much, everybody, for for a massive input into into this meeting. Right, if you will, if you'll bear with me, I believe it was just us now. Is it? Bill Smith, Clyde, Clyde Jones, where's Clyde Jones? Oh, there's there. Um, big red mark for me. I took a vote on the on item three, but I didn't pre-read the recommendations, which I believe I should have. So I'm going to go back just to put that right. Um, the recommendations for item three, two, one, scrutiny members consider appendix three and use this when planning the forward work programme. Two, two, scrutiny members agree the forward work programme be developed and brought to the next scrutiny committee meeting. Mm -hmm. And two, three, scrutiny members agree terms in the forward work programme up to summer recess. Unfortunately, I have to ask you to re-vote on that one, please, and my apologies. So all those in the first time chair in there, but <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done it, yeah. Yeah, so, but you're back in the seat now, but so uh, don't worry about it. Sir. Back in the saddle, I. So if uh, if those in favour could raise your hands, be appreciated.
Is that carried, Michelle? Yes, that's all seven votes. Yeah, no, no, it's lovely. Thank you very much. And again, my apologies for that. It's been a long time. Um, right, item six, report recommendation. It, this was mentioned a couple of times in the meeting, and I, I promise not to drag this out too much. Um, and I think it's worthy of being fed back. In my opinion, reports need to be concise and clear. The self-evaluation we, we looked at does not fall into these categories. The record, report could have been split into departments and each scrutinized separately as they cover a wide range of services, possibly quarterly in workshops and brought back to this committee. I also believe that the officers should look at the self-evaluation template and questions in how they are set out to make it clearer for the reader and avoid duplication of pro responses. But I'm not sure about other members, but I found this a very difficult read with certain parts of it jumping all over the place and it was murder to try and get through. Um, so I am proposing that as a recommendation following questions first from the committee members. And I've got Clive Jones started off, I think. Dr. Chair, I entirely agree with you. Um, it was all over the shop. They repeated themselves several times. If somebody went through this, who is a, you know, an experienced English teacher, they'd have struck at a few pages because they've gone over things over and over again. Um, but it's not well structured. And I agree with you um, entirely that um, we need more clarity and concise reports. Uh, we, well, certainly members have been here uh, some years. We know the history of a lot of these things. And in many cases, they were given um, you know, pages on, on history. Um, anyway, I agree entirely with the point you're making, uh, Jay. Thank you very much for that. Phil Starr, I believe, is next. Yeah, I agree entirely with what Clive said. I think I, 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 I am Clive, and I think Councillor Smith brought this very point up. Uh, it, it, it was overwieldy. It was, a, it was a complete document which covered the whole of the council's activities. Uh, we are just one scrutiny, and so it could have been a lot more streamlined, and it could have been a lot more easy to understand, and I think it would have been scrutinised far better if it had been much more streamlined, because as I mentioned earlier, sometimes you just can't see for the wood for the trees in these uh, in these areas. It also, as Clive mentioned, uh, followed a template, and it followed a template which wasn't appropriate in many cases because there are any number of things repeated, especially in columns two and three. So areas for development and potential areas for development, really there was a tremendous amount of overlap. So I think I, I did have a chat because I missed the pre the pre meeting on uh, Monday. I did have a chat with Andrew Mogford um, for about half an hour after that. Then, and we were of the same opinion that documents taken to this committee need to be a lot more precise, a lot more precise, and a lot more focused on what we're expected to be looking at. And it's not good enough for a, a big document to be presented and for us to expect it to be able to scrutinise that in. In, in what is really a very short space of time. So I entirely support what uh, Councillor Jones has said. Yeah, Andrew, do you want to come in on that point? Yeah, just to reinforce some of the comments really in the training that we've done and everything else, where we mentioned that we were going to look at uh, streamlining our reporting and working in a different way. Yes, that was a report which carried over from, from the last cycle, but going forward, I think that's something that if the committee is happy with, I'll take away and make sure that uh, that our message is uh, is taken back to the relevant report authors. Andrew, can Thank I just you. add to that as well? Uh, and it follows along Phil's line um, that the questions were inappropriate for this uh, scrutiny. The the head the three head in questions that they, they need to be more focused on this um, this scrutiny. One cap doesn't fit all in in the big scheme. Yeah, no problem. Do you know, Chair? Uh, Paula? Ah, uh, yes, Chair, thanks. I just, I think, as you said, less is better. You can focus more on more priority points. And for me, being a new elected member, it's my first scrutiny. Um, 
has been overwhelmed, if I'm honest. But I think, as Andrew said, we did discuss in the workshops that this was a carryover, and hopefully going forward, it'll be a you know a lot more robust, and we can focus on just certain areas that we've addressed tonight. Yeah, there was a real baptism of fire, Paula. Um, on your I hope up. you never decide to put me over the next few months, or I'm going on sick. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the good thing is th everything will start coming together, and we'll get into some some sort of normality. Yes, and the yes. good thing about it is that we will have the say of what is being uh, scrutinised. Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Bill Smith. Yeah, support everything you said, Chair, yeah, because I'm doing over the way I work with social services. And we've got to have the right information, the right officers, right, and, and bullet points, not all these door letters, bloody paragraphs, and books we got in on reports, because sometimes you read too much and you're just lost at the beginning. So it's taking it forward now. Yeah, totally. So um, are you going to support my recommendation yeah. of everything that was that we've just uh, that we've all spoken about? If you, yeah, again, yeah. if you can do it, can you please raise virtual hands? Yeah, I think that's unanimous again. Is that unanimous, Cher? Yes, it is, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, there's uh, nothing else with regard to report recommendations. Item seven, feedback on activities. There won't be any because we haven't got any outstanding actions. Item eight, any other business deemed urgent by the chair? I have none. So it just leaves me to say thank you very much for being gentle with me on my, my first one back in. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed it and let's hope they get better from here. Thank you very much and good night to all everyone. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thanks, 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 Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. That was interesting, Clive, wasn't it?